So basically, service coordination includes activities to implement the IPP, um, to assure that the planning team considers all appropriate options. This is this is very hard because when you're faced with budget reductions and you and you want to bring because you're a good social worker, basically what you are, you want to bring the laundry list in, and you know if you bring it in, that somebody's going to pick something on there that you can't buy because your service standard said you can't buy it. You're in trouble already. And the link gets killed. That's who gets killed in the process, is the link. Uh, the negative falls upon the consumer and the people who provide the direct services, but the link is the one that gets killed. And therefore, the link doesn't become as effective as it needs to be. Uh, securing through the purchase or by obtaining from generic services, you hear this all the time, this generic thing. Yes, the law says we're supposed to go to generic services first. Oh, goody, IHSS is being cut. <laughs> and the DDS budget is being backfilled for some of those cuts. Uh, the good news is we're being backfilled. The bad news is, and, and I, won't, I, I will not stand here and tell you that I know it's 100% because it worries me, because when you can't see the numbers, how much the backfill is, you never know what it actually is. But the good news is we're being backfilled. Um, but, all that's doing is pushing everything into one house, and guess what? Our fish tank's getting bigger, and we're becoming even more noticeable. There's a report out called uh, California Facts 2011 or something like that. I can't remember, but it's on the web. And it, and it, shows, it shows the spending patterns for regional center services, and it shows it going on a line that's like this. And one of my issues about that chart is, I wonder if it accounts for all the backfills that have gone on in the last couple of years. When dental services were cut, regional centers were backfilled for some of that. When something else was cut, because we're an entitlement, the good news, we're an entitlement, we were backfilled. The trouble is, they're, they're causing us to become noticeable then showing that our expenditures are going like this, when in fact those expenditures were already there, but they were spread among six other people. And it's, it, it's, it's a dangerous game to be playing, the very dangerous game. And it worries me that we can't identify how much backfill money is there so we can say, well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was over here anyway. So when you look at our trends, you should just look at what we're doing, just money that we're responsible for. I think you find it's getting kind of flat that it's not going like this. Certainly, the rates haven't gone up <laughs> in a long time. Um, and, and you're helping to contribute through your payment reductions. I, I like these euphemistic approaches. Um, so we know, and people aren't necessarily getting more services. Some of the services are more expensive because the type of people we're serving are becoming um, more expensive in terms of meeting their needs. Um, but you know, I would say that the system has actually been flattening out if you don't count in this other money. Um, but yeah, we do have to go get generic services. They don't exist, but we have to go look for them. It takes up time, by the way. We actually had case managers having to ask for denials of dental care through Medi-Cal. Well, wait, you cut dental. You, you just told anybody they don't get it. Why do we have to go get a denial? We don't know it. We know the answer. But they had to go do that in order to justify buying the service. It was like, Okay, but this, does this make any sense to you? No. Government, I work for them forever, and they're just wonderful. Uh, <laughs> coordination of services and support uh, programs, collection and dissemination of information. Oh my God, we love information. We never use it, but we love it. Uh, monitoring the implementation of the plan. To me, this is be after you plan and you get things moving, this is the place where we should be spending our time. Uh, some people call it quality assurance and all that. I don't care what it is. What are the outcomes? Are people's lives achieving the outcomes that you saw in the beginning of this? If they're not, we're doing something wrong. We really are. We're doing something wrong. We've either misidentified the, uh, the outcomes that are realistic for an individual, or we're not providing services and supports that were designed to get us there. But something's going wrong. We spend very little time in this. We monitor a lot, don't get me wrong. I'm sure the case managers say, well, we're making those quarterly visits, we're going here, we're going there, we're having this meeting, we're filling out that. That's not what I call measuring outcome. We do it too, we have a whole quality assurance program that sucks. 
It's funded by the state. We go out, we ask somebody 140 questions in 45 minutes. And what do you think the quality of that data is? <laughs> it sucks. But I'm drawing down a couple billion a year for it, so shh. <laughs> Notification of due process rights, this is probably a favorite. Uh, it's a favorite of mine because I believe that we all have due process rights and that we all should exercise them to the uh, maximum extent, but it is a pain for the regional centers. It's called fair hearings. Um, and um, uh, people are very intimidated in the process. Regional centers have to go through meetings. Lots of times you end up in front of an administrative law judge and you don't think it's much brighter than the traffic judge that we were at last week, but the fact of the matter is, it's called due process. We all have it as citizens. These folks have the same due process within the system. Where appropriate, makes a choice as a provider. This is very difficult. One, because um, people say, well, they don't give me a laundry list of all the providers, so how would I know? And I'm thinking, so what good would that be? It's a laundry list. I've seen the vendor list. I can show it to you. Um, and so you really, there needs to be other ways of helping people get to know who's out there, what they do, and what skills they bring to the table um, without just sending out the laundry list. I have lots and lots of younger parents who say, well, if they just give me a list, I'd pick from them. I'd pick the services I want, and I'd pick who would provide them. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, well, you'd be rudely um, uh, mistaken to do it that way because it's really not the concept. Uh, of individual planning. And of course, we had to ever get to the funding of services in these changes. Least costly, it does say, uh, it, it, it uses terminology around uh, least costly available, comparable. And you know what happened? Somebody wanted to put least costly in, and because they knew how it would be interpreted, we started adding words. And we kept trying to add enough words to say it doesn't mean cheapest, instead of just saying that doesn't mean cheapest. But you know, this is law, you can't write it that way, you have to put in lots of words. Um, so, but again, it needs to be consistent with people's particular needs, it needs to be identified in the IPP, so there are a lot of other pieces around it. Did, was the message to save money? Yeah. No question, the message was to save money. The message of, of giving us a potential reduction uh, of that of a half a billion dollars, it's to cut costs in the system. That's exactly what it is. It's nothing else but that. It, it, they're not even thinking about the rest of the issues. Generic, and again, heavily pushing that the regional centers must use generic services. So in-home supporting services can provide the support that needs to happen. That's who needs to do it before the regional center does it. I don't think, in my opinion, these are not new things. If you go, if you go backwards in this presentation and you look at some of these, they were there before. What you're seeing now is attempts to refine that language, make it clearer, maybe for the wrong reasons. I get it. I'm not happy with it. I'm busy writing blank letters right now. The legislature saying this is a really dumb idea. Do you know what it's going to mean? People are going to be in institutions. They're going to be on the street. I mean, I've got 100 stories. Um, but, but that's what this is really about, is trying to refine them. Uh, requires regional centers should be accountable for the money that they receive uh, by living within their budget. Uh, regional centers often declare uh, uh, deficits. They, they, as a total system, they can run into millions of dollars about mid-year. A lot of that has to do with the way services are purchased and, and planned for, and a lot of it's the commitments are made but then not used. And, so it's never really, the number's never really that good. Locate and or develop innovative and cost-effective ways to achieve desired outcomes and secure services from qualified service providers and only continue those where there is reasonable progress and agreement. If you remember nothing else, remember those words at the end. Progress and agreement to stay in them. We do not listen to people enough in this system to find out whether they actually think they're getting anything out of what we're buying for them. Uh, carrying out the responsibilities, uh, again, ensure the service and supports are provided in the manner that's consistent with the values that we've gone through, the innovative cost-effective services and supports that are flexible, individualized, and promote community integration. This has got to be a great line. By the time you did all of this, 
you just have a rubber band and you get on it to divide it from one place to the next. You can see we just keep trying to add words to, to, to give it, to keep the sense of the entitlement, to keep the message of the original Lanham and Act, uh, but live within the constraints from a system that went from serving 500 people to a system serving 250,000 people over 40 years. No one really envisioned the system would ever get this big. It wasn't really part of the thought process at the time. Um, and assure the quality and effectiveness of services and supports that are provided to the individual. Same messages over and over and over again. New changes are designed to try to define those old things, and the bottom line is the challenges are the same. So, what's that? Thank you.